Initial incision is made two to three centimeters lateral to the pedicle border. In the AP view, verify that the access introducer is docked on the lateral border of the pedicle at about the nine o'clock position. In the lateral view, verify that the access introducer is docked on the posterior aspect of the pedicle and is in line to be equal distance from superior and inferior end plates. In the AP view, advance the access introducer to mid-pedicle. In the lateral view, verify the access introducer is mid-pedicle. In the AP view, advance the access introducer to the medial border of the pedicle. Do not advance the access introducer beyond the medial border of the pedicle without verifying in the lateral view that the access introducer tip is at or beyond the posterior wall. In the lateral view, advance the tip of the access introducer to just before mid vertebral body. While supporting the working cannula, Rotate the access introducer handle counterclockwise and remove the inner stylet. Once the inner stylet is removed from the access cannula, the distal end of the access cannula should be a few millimeters posterior to mid vertebral body. Insert the power curve navigating osteotome into the working cannula, ensuring that the tip direction indicator is oriented toward midline of the patient. Advance to first laser mark on the shaft the power curve distal tip will be flush with the distal tip of the working cannula. In the lateral view, advance the power curve navigating osteotome to the next laser marking and rotate the deployment handle in a clockwise direction to articulate the tip. Alternate advancing and tip deployment with AP and lateral imaging. Verify in the AP view that the distal tip of the power curve navigating osteotome is across midline at least to medial border of the contralateral pedicle. Remove power curve navigating osteotome in the reverse order. Take care to alternate dearticulation and withdrawal. Verify under lateral fluoroscopic imaging that power curve navigating osteotome is clear of the anterior wall. The Arcadia balloon is equipped with a resheathing tool that can be locked into the hub. Do not remove. In the lateral view, insert the Arcadia steerable balloon into the access cannula until flush with the distal tip. Begin turning the steering handle on the Arcadia steerable balloon catheter clockwise to aid in directing the distal portion of the device when the distal radiopaque marker of the balloon has exited the working cannula. Continue advancing the balloon catheter and turning the steering handle simultaneously to follow the access channel. 
The steering mechanism features a detectable hard stop when the maximum articulation has been reached. Arcadia Balloon Catheter Inflation Under fluoroscopic guidance, inflate the Arcadia Balloon Catheter to 44 PSI to secure balloon in position. Increase the volume in small increments. Assess balloon position in lateral and AP views before proceeding to further volume increase. Stop balloon inflation when the treatment goal is achieved, any part of the inflated balloon contacts cortical bone, or the maximum inflation volume and or maximum inflation pressure have been reached. Arcadia Balloon Catheter Removal Deflate the balloon before removal by pulling the inflation device plunger all the way back and removing all contrast medium from the balloon. Return the steering mechanism to the starting position by turning the steering handle counterclockwise before removal until the hard stop is detected. Remove the Arcadia balloon catheter from the bone with a gentle motion. If there is resistance, connect the locking syringe to the inflation port, pull the syringe plunger back, locking it to create a vacuum, and resume the balloon removal. Do not withdraw the balloon catheter unless it is fully deflated. Never withdraw the balloon catheter against resistance. Determine the cause of resistance under fluoroscopy and take the necessary remedial actions.